Friday practice at Silverstone is over and the fastest driver of the day was Britain's very own Lando Norris. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I am going to be doing a data analysis from Friday practice. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, which is Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari and Red Bull, so stick around for that. Yes, Friday practice is over at Silverstone, and in typical British style, the weather was a mixture of dry and wet, with some dark clouds in between. In general, it was welcome to England. But thankfully, FP1 was dry, and the majority of FP2 was dry, so we got to see a lot of dry running. The fastest driver in both practice sessions was Lando Norris, as McLaren is looking very hooked up so far this weekend. But how did the lap times evolve from FP1 to FP2? Well, let's take a look at his fastest laps from each session so that we can see how things changed. And when you look at these two laps, the main differences that you can see is how in FP2, Norris and all of the drivers clearly have the power units turned up a little bit more than they did in FP1. Going down the first DRS zone, for example, in FP1, Norris reaches 308 kilometers per hour. But in FP2, he is able to reach top speed of 315 kilometers per hour. And the top speed overall in FP2 for Norris was 323 kilometers per hour. So they have more speed in FP2. But the thing that surprises me actually is that in FP1, his lap was somewhat cleaner. Going into the loop in FP2, you can see that Norris is actually a lot slower and carries only a minimum apex speed of 95 km per hour in FP2, whereas in FP1 he was able to carry 101 km per hour. Also, on the brakes at Brooklands and Luffield, Norris is faster in the first practice session. But when we get to the higher speed corners of Cops, Maggots, Beckets and Chapel, Norris in FP2, with a lot more grip and the power unit turned up a little bit more, stretches the advantage that he has, and we really get to see that McLaren car come alive. Then, on the exit of the Stowe corner, Norris with the extra grip in the circuit gets a much better run. Altogether, the lap time in FP2 was 9 tenths of a second faster than in FP1. So, we've seen how the times change throughout the session, but what about the top speed that the teams were able to reach? Well, let's take a look at the speeds that they were able to reach in these practice sessions. This can help give us an indication as to who's running more or less downforce, or possibly who has things turned down or turned up a little bit more. And when you look at these top speeds, it definitely looks like the lower midfield teams are running with less downforce, as Alpine, V-Carb, Sauber, and even by their own lofty standards, Haas, our rockets in a straight line. This would make sense given what we saw today in practice, especially with Nico Hulkenberg, as the Haas did look like a weapon in the straights. And well, the top speed does back it up, as he was able to reach 329 kilometers per hour, as was the Aston Martin. But when it comes to the top teams, they're all looking a fair bit slower than the midfield in a straight line. This could be a mixture of them having things turned down a little bit more, and also having a little bit more downforce. Mercedes were the slowest car in a straight line as they were only able to reach 319 kilometers per hour. They might have a little bit more downforce and they might also be looking at wet setups for Sunday's Grand Prix. So we've seen the top speeds, but the question now is in the midfield, what teams were looking good? Well, I have to get it out of the way as they look lightning in a straight line. Haas today looked great as Nico Hulkenberg was briefly the fastest driver of the day, but he ended the day in 4th place, right behind his nemesis from the previous race, Sergio Perez. His teammate Kevin Magnussen didn't fare quite as well as he was the slowest driver of the day, but Hulkenberg is once again showing why Sauber and Audi have signed him up for next year. Let's compare then his lap to the next closest midfield driver, which was Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin. And when you look at this lap, it's clearly not just the Haas being fast in a straight line, which helped him today, but also it was Hulkenberg's ability to get the car turned in high speed. I expected that this might actually be a weak spot for Haas, but Hulkenberg, through Maggots, Beckets and Chapel, was able to carry more speed than Stroll was. 
Also at Stowe Corner here, you can see Hulk carries more speed at the apex and finally gets a better run through Club Corner. Altogether, this leads to a lap time improvement of 3 tenths. For tomorrow, Hulkenberg and Haas will be looking to keep this up. If they can, they could very easily find themselves in a position for good points. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Mercedes. For Mercedes, the British Grand Prix so far looks like it has been a bit of a backward step. Although that could be because they have it turned out more than their rivals. Previous race winner George Russell was in 10th place today and Lewis Hamilton was in 6th place. On the longer runs, it looks as if Mercedes were focusing more on the soft compound of tyre. And you can see that here when you look at the longer runs of Hamilton, Russell and the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. The reason I've brought up Leclerc is because when you look at this, things start off well on the softs. But after the soft tyres reach about 10 or 11 laps, the pace of the soft starts to drop off more significantly for Mercedes versus the Ferrari, showing how the mediums might be a little bit more consistent during the Grand Prix. For Mercedes though, if the start of the race is borderline between wet and dry, then they will have some crucial data because the drivers will very much want to be on those soft compound of tyres. For Mercedes though, they do need to improve their one lap pace as they were six and a half tenths away from the fastest driver. For Ferrari, it feels somewhat similar to Mercedes. However, I do think that there is a lot more in it for Ferrari as we did see Leclerc have a big snap on his lap. Even so though, he is six tenths away from Lando Norris. We saw Leclerc's long run pace compared to Mercedes already, but how did Leclerc lose six tenths to the McLaren? Well, let's compare the two laps. And when you look at these two laps, the one thing that we have to ignore is the run through the final corners, as Leclerc's data does glitch a little bit, but we can still learn a lot from the rest of the lap. Going through turn one at Abbey, Norris is able to carry a little bit more speed as the McLaren doesn't scrub as much speed as the Ferrari, but at the infield section, Leclerc does manage to claw back some of that time as Ferrari does look good here like we would expect based on what we saw at Monaco. As the speed starts to build back up though, the McLaren advantage starts to increase as well. It is especially noticeable through Cops, Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel. Norris just carries more speed than the Ferrari, showing how balanced that McLaren is in high speed corners, which is kind of what we should expect. Through Stowe Corner as well, Norris gets a better run before heading into Club Corner. This altogether leads to a time difference of 6 tenths, showing how Ferrari have a lot of work to do if they want to challenge the front runners this weekend. For McLaren, today was a perfect day, and they are looking very strong, as we just saw as Lando Norris was first and teammate Piastri was second. Let's now compare the times of the two teammates today to see how Norris gained 3 tenths of a second over teammate Piastri. And when you look at these two laps, the difference starts at the infield section as Norris doesn't back off quite as much as Piastri, showing the strength that Norris has so far this weekend. Also through Maggots and Beckett's, Norris was carrying more speed and he was faster than Piastri. Piastri did get a better run though down the hangar straight, but then on the exit of Club Corner, Norris once again gets a better run and that leads to Norris beating his teammate by 3 tenths of a second. For McLaren, if they can keep this up tomorrow, then it could easily be a front row lockout. But finally then, for Red Bull, it was not as strong of a start to the weekend, as Verstappen was 7th place and Perez was 3rd. But it has to be said, usually when we see these kind of results, it means there is still more time in the locker for Max Verstappen, and we should expect him to extract more pace tomorrow. Perez though was still 4 tenths of a second away from Norris and the fastest time. So let's compare the time of Norris to Sergio Perez, which is not really something we do very often. And when you look at these two laps in the high speed corners, you can see they're actually very similar in terms of pace. However, McLaren carries more speed at the apex when on the brakes. At the infield section, through Chapel, and at Stowe Corner, Norris carried more speed at the apex, which has been an advantage of the McLaren in recent times. 
it is going to be exciting to see how and if Red Bull can close the gap to McLaren in qualifying. I think they will, and I think it's going to be very fun to see. So, with that in mind then, what is my top five for qualifying? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. P4 will be Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes. P3 will be Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. P2 will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And I'm going to go for Lando Norris to take pole position for the British Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.